Hi everyone, this is Grant from Dome Music Technologies. Uh, today I just wanted to give you a quick overview of the ACE Constants module, uh, which you see here. Um, basically it's a very simple utility module. Um, in its easiest case, it just outputs a particular voltage at its output socket. Um, so I've got the Monkey Business Audio voltmeter here, and that's reading the output of channel 4. So as you can see, there's nothing at the input socket. The knob itself is set to the value 1.2345678 volts, and the output is being read by the voltmeter. In addition to giving you a DC output, um, the ranges are from 0 to plus 10 volts, back through to zero and down to negative 10 volts. So it's zero volts up at the 12 o'clock position. And I'll just manually edit that value back to 1.2345678. Um, what you've got is the output of channel four is being fed into the input of channel five. And what happens when you put an input voltage into the input of a channel is that it gets multiplied by the value of the knob setting. So in this case, we've got it cranked up right to 10 times the input voltage. So when you put 1.2345678 into it, it gets multiplied by 10 up to 12.345678. And similarly, if you want a different multiplication factor, if you want to invert it, say, we'll send it right back to minus 10 volts. And so you get minus 12.345678. And then the output of channel 5 is being taken to channel 6 and again multiplied by 10, so that's minus 123.45678 volts. Um, so you can get a constant DC value or you can get a multiplication factor. And what I've got set up here is the square wave output of the mini LFO, which is seen in the blue trace here. Now, as you can see, this is a unipolar signal, so in the lowest part of the cycle, it's at 0 volts, in the high part of the cycle, it's at 5 volts. But you might have an application where you want to actually have a, a bipolar value. So what I've done here is I'm using channel 1's output just as a simple DC source, and I've set it to minus 2.5 volts, which you can see here in the monitor. So I've set that to the input of channel 2, and I've also combined it with the square wave output from the mini LFO. So what you've got coming in here is a voltage which swings between minus 2.5 volts at the low period and plus 2.5 volts at the high period. But I've also set the multiplication factor to 0.4 which is two-fifths, if you remember your high school maths, or primary school maths. Um, so that's taking 2.5 volts down to 1 volts. So because you've got plus 2.5 volts and minus 2.5 volts coming in here at the output, you'll have plus 1 volt and minus 1 volt. And if we feed that into the voltage controlled oscillator here, you can hear that that's going up an octave and down an octave from the base frequency of the oscillator. I'll just increase the decay time a bit. So you're getting. Similarly, if you wanted to make the triangle wave, which is usually a bipolar value, and turn that into this. if 
you wanted to turn that into a unipolar signal, uh, we do effectively the opposite of what we did with the square wave. So I'll just take that out of here. And we'll just look at the output on the oscilloscope. So if we shift this to the channel 2 input, so we can see that we've, we're still subtracting 2.5 volts from that. Now, the triangle wave runs from minus 5 volts to plus 5 volts. So what we want to do is, in order to remove the, shift the, the negative point up to the 0 volts point, we need to add 5 volts to that signal. So what we'll do is just type in 5 here. And if we just bump up the range here, and then if we set this to 1 times, it shows you that when we put in the triangle wave and mix in plus 5 volts value, then you get a unipolar triangle wave which goes from 0 volts up to 10 volts. Now that's quite a wide range. Uh, of values. So you can use the multiplication factor as an attenuation factor. So if you wanted to bring that down to so that the swing was just from 0 volts up to 1 volt, then you could just type in 0 0.1 as the multiplication factor. And we'll just bump up the range a bit. So there you can see that we've got the triangle wave, which is lowest value is 0 volts and highest value is 1 volt. So it's useful for shifting voltage levels and for multiplying signals and for inverting them. So if I wanted to change that value around so that it was inverted relative to the input value, I would change that from plus 0 0.1 volts to minus 0 0.1 and there you have the inverted output value. So it's still going from 0 volts, but it's going down to minus 1 volts. Um, so that, that's its main function, is to act as a voltage shifter, a uh, steady DC voltage offset, um, and you can use it as a multiplier, an inverter, and as an attenuator. Um, in a lot of cases, the, the Cherry Audio Basic Attenuator is actually a better tool to use uh, when you want to have finer control over the 0 to 100% um, attenuation settings. Um, but this can be more useful for if you want to apply actual um, gain, sort of uh, amplification of a signal uh, above 100%. Um, and it's useful as a DC offset, which you don't get in the Cherry Audio Nucleus package. It, there's a DC source in uh, Voltage Modular Core, but it doesn't appear in the Nucleus. So this can be quite handy if you don't have the Voltage Modular Core package. Um, so one application that I used it for was the envelope signal in the VM900 series. The, the envelope generator outputs a 0 to 5 volts range, but it's quite a disappointing range on the 904A uh, filter. So what I've done in the past is, in order to get a decent sweep of the filter frequency, that's quite a low sweep you've got there. So what I've done in the past is just doubled up on the voltage output going to the control inputs. So you get a reasonable sweep there. But what you can do is if you feed this through one of the channels of the ACE constants and put it in there, then you can 
get whatever multiplication factor you want. That's three times, which is actually quite quite a lot. <laughs> So I think that pretty much covers all the uses for ACE constants. Um, it's, it's basically just a utility module, um, but it gives you precise control over voltages, which can be useful um, at a later stage when you actually want to implement analog computer um, programs and patches. Um, but we'll have a look at that later once we integrate, once we introduce things like the integrator. But um, for the time being, if you just look upon it as a, a sort of combined amplifier, attenuator, inverter, and a DC source, um, I think that pretty much covers all of its uh, applications.